So this is the story of Lieutenant Commander J. McMillan, RN, retired morning. Twenty-five a.m. My dad wakes up and he tells the house, "I'm just waking up." Oh, six twenty-seven a.m. My dad walks across the landing to the bathroom. He tells the house, "I'm just walking across the landing to the bathroom." Oh, six thirty-one a.m. My dad goes into the bathroom, shuts the door, and makes the same mysterious noises he makes every morning at this time. And he shouts through the door, I'm just making the mysterious noises like I do every morning at this time. So that's what my dad did. He told the house just what he was doing. He always told the house exactly what he was doing. Oh, 6 40 then, my dad goes downstairs. He passes the fifth step, which always creaks. And he tells the house, I'm just passing the fifth step. It's still creaking. And upstairs, me and my brother and my mum are listening. Because that's what my dad did. He always told the house exactly what he was doing. Oh, 700 hours. My dad's downstairs and telling the house that he's making the breakfast. I'm just making the breakfast. One ration of bacon, one slice of toast, one egg. Just making the breakfast. One ration of bacon, one slice of toast, one egg. He puts it on his favourite plate, the one with the photograph of the Balahoolish ferry on it. And he shouts up, I'm just making my breakfast on my favourite plate, the one with the Balahoolish ferry on it. And upstairs, me and my brother and my mum can hear my dad telling us exactly what he was doing, because that's what he did. And he comes back upstairs, oh, 7.20 a.m., starts to get dressed, puts his suit on, his trousers, his jacket, his shirt, his tie, his braces, his socks, his shoes, and his sock suspenders. He's the last man in the Western world to wear sock suspenders, and he's proud of that. He tells the house, I'm just putting on the sock suspenders. I'm the last man in the Western world to wear sock suspenders, and I didn't care, because that's what he did, my dad. He told the house exactly what he was doing. He told the house just what he was doing. And he goes downstairs, telling the house, just going downstairs, he goes through the kitchen, was outside, and even though we can't hear him, he's still telling us, I'm outside now. He lifts up the garage door and starts to reverse the old Zephyr 6 down the drive, UAG 8. I'm just reversing the Zephyr 6 down the drive. And he gets down to the bottom of the drive, and he opens the gates at the bottom of the drive. And the whole thing about my childhood was, I always remember that when he opened those gates, the bottom of the drive, they play the first two notes of Slug John B by the Beach Brothers. And my dad says, I'm just opening the gates at the bottom of our drive. I must get them oiled because I didn't like the Beach Brothers. <laughs> he comes back to the house. He tells us, I'm just away to the office. And upstairs, me and my brother and my mum listen because he tells the house exactly what he was doing. He gets in the car. He reverses down the drive, onto to Edithorpe Lane, he turns right, down Tempest Avenue, and the sun comes up over North Street, and my dad gets a pair of sunglasses out and puts them on the front of his glasses, and it looks faintly ridiculous, <laughs> and he tells the house, even though we can't hear him, I look faintly ridiculous, <laughs> and he sets off down North Street to the ring up Nanimar Road, down Snape Hill, through Wombwell, up Woodwalk, to Birdwell. Because that's what he does. He always tells the house exactly what he was doing. Every morning, the same routine. He made a story out of it. He told the house. 
house exactly what it was doing. That's why I loved him so much. Because he could make nothing into pure stony gold. So let's leave him there. Just driving down the A61 past Taylor's towards his office on Road Road Road. We can't hear him, but he's still telling us exactly what it was doing. Because that's what he did me, Dad. He always told us. 